Have you ever narrowly escaped death and found yourself questioning how on earth you're still here? Perhaps you felt that sudden surge of adrenaline, the chilling clarity that one tiny shift, a mere fraction of a second, or a single step in another direction, would have ended your life forever. Now consider this unsettling idea. What if it wasn't luck or chance that saved you? What if instead it's fundamentally impossible for you to experience your own death at all? At first this might seem absurd, pure fantasy even. Yet, according to one of science's most astonishing and debated theories, known as quantum immortality, every life-threatening situation you've ever faced might have ended very differently in another universe, a universe you're simply unable to perceive. Imagine surviving not through extraordinary luck, divine intervention, or quick thinking, but because the laws of reality itself dictate you must always experience survival somewhere, somehow. Could the universe itself be conspiring to ensure your consciousness persists eternally? In this journey, we're diving deep into quantum immortality, the mind-boggling notion suggesting death, at least from your own subjective viewpoint, may never truly occur. But as we begin this exploration, remember immortality may not be the blessing it initially seems. Prepare yourself, because reality might soon become stranger than any fiction you've ever encountered. To genuinely understand quantum immortality, we must briefly venture into the captivating yet bizarre world of quantum mechanics. But fear not, we won't get lost in equations or obscure jargon. Instead, we'll focus on a few essential, fascinating concepts at the heart of our universe. At the core of quantum physics lies the baffling phenomenon of superposition, the idea that particles exist in multiple states simultaneously. Imagine flipping a coin, but instead of landing clearly heads or tails, it keeps spinning continuously in mid-air, existing in both states simultaneously, until someone observes it. Only then does it settle into one state or the other. It's a strange counterintuitive reality proven by experiments time and again. This paradox led physicist Hugh Everett in 1957 to propose something extraordinary, the many worlds interpretation. Everett suggested that when the coin finally lands heads or tails, rather than reality choosing just one outcome, the universe itself splits into separate parallel realities, each containing a different result. In other words, every decision, every random event, every possibility you can imagine actually branches into multiple distinct universes. But here's why Everett's theory matters to us today. If every possible outcome truly occurs, there must always be at least one universe where you survive every close call. Crucially, quantum immortality posits that your consciousness would seamlessly follow the path where you continue existing no matter how improbable your survival becomes. Even renowned cosmologist Max Tegmark has recognized Everett's Many Worlds theory as a scientifically coherent interpretation, widely respected despite its startling implications. Yet, before we embrace this idea too quickly, let's take it to its logical and rather chilling conclusion. What would happen if someone actually tested quantum immortality directly? Brace yourself, because we're about to delve into one of science's most troubling and thought-provoking experiments. To vividly illustrate how quantum immortality might actually play out, let's consider one of the most controversial and unsettling thought experiments ever conceived, the quantum suicide experiment. Originally proposed as a chilling test of Hugh Everett's Many Worlds interpretation, and later highlighted by cosmologist Max Tegmark as scientifically plausible, this experiment places your life directly in the hands of pure quantum randomness. Imagine willingly participating in an experiment explicitly designed to test quantum immortality. You sit calmly before a specialized quantum device directly linked to the spin of a single subatomic particle. Every second, this device measures the particle's spin. 
If the particle spins upwards, nothing happens, you're unharmed, and the experiment continues. But if it spins downwards, the device instantly and painlessly ends your life without warning, without suffering, just instant oblivion. Now picture repeating this harrowing scenario again and again. With each passing second, your survival becomes increasingly improbable. After just ten attempts, the odds of remaining alive are less than one in a thousand. After twenty attempts, they plummet to an astonishing one in over a million. Yet impossibly you remain alive. According to quantum immortality, this occurs because every measurement splits reality into two distinct universes, one in which you survive and another in which you don't. Crucially, your consciousness can never perceive the universe where your life ends. Instead, it seamlessly continues into the reality where you survive against all odds. But here's where the experiment becomes profoundly disturbing. Your immortality remains forever private and unprovable. From your subjective viewpoint, you'd feel invincible, always surviving even the most impossible scenarios. Yet to any external observer, your friends, family, or the scientists conducting the experiment, your death would inevitably occur, tragically witnessed again and again across countless parallel universes. This haunting paradox leads us to an unsettling question. If quantum immortality is real, how many times have you unknowingly survived seemingly certain death? Could reality itself be quietly guiding your consciousness along infinite paths of improbable survival? Or is this concept just a compelling philosophical illusion? Before reaching any conclusions, we must carefully examine the scientific evidence. Because quantum immortality, however speculative it may seem, is firmly rooted in legitimate, though deeply controversial, scientific thought. Quantum immortality might initially strike you as intriguing, yet ultimately impossible, perhaps nothing more than elaborate science fiction. Surprisingly, however, the idea hasn't been dismissed outright by the scientific community. Some of the greatest minds in physics have seriously engaged with its compelling logic. As we've already touched upon, Hugh Everett himself, the physicist behind the Many Worlds interpretation, genuinely believed his revolutionary theory implied a form of immortality. Everett reasoned that since every quantum event creates parallel universes containing every possible outcome, it becomes logically impossible for consciousness to perceive its own non-existence. In other words, Everett didn't see quantum immortality as fanciful speculation. He considered it a natural, logical implication of his rigorous scientific framework. Cosmologist Max Tegmark further defined the strict conditions under which quantum immortality could theoretically function. According to Tegmark, three critical conditions must be met. First, survival must depend solely on a genuinely quantum random event. Second, death must be instantaneous with no intermediate outcome. And finally, it must be entirely unperceived. There can be no awareness of impending death. Under these exact conditions, Tegmark acknowledges quantum immortality as scientifically coherent, even if untestable. But what about anecdotal evidence, near-death experiences or profound episodes of déjà vu? Could such moments briefly expose our consciousness to alternate realities where we survived? Neuroscientific research strongly suggests otherwise, providing robust neurological explanations for these phenomena, usually attributing them to intense brain activity during trauma or emotional stress. While fascinating, these experiences don't convincingly support quantum immortality scientifically, even though they remain intriguing mysteries of human consciousness. Ultimately, quantum immortality exists at the fascinating boundary between scientific possibility and philosophical speculation. Its credibility hinges entirely on the acceptance of the many worlds interpretation, respected yet fundamentally unproven. 
Alternative models, such as the widely accepted Copenhagen interpretation, completely reject the notion of parallel universes, effectively eliminating quantum immortality altogether. Yet, despite its speculative nature, quantum immortality profoundly challenges us, forcing us to reconsider life's deepest mysteries and the true nature of existence. But before we too eagerly embrace eternal existence, we must address another, far more troubling question, one that casts immortality not as a desirable dream, but perhaps as the most unimaginable curse of all. Quantum immortality initially seems thrilling, an endless existence, a permanent escape from the fear and finality of death. But before you envy such immortality, carefully consider what eternity genuinely means. Imagine living endlessly, watching time flow around you relentlessly. Centuries, even millennia, pass as you remain painfully conscious, trapped by the very immortality you once desired. Philosopher David Lewis famously argued that immortality could be the worst imaginable fate, a cruel sentence to eternal torment. Instead of offering infinite happiness, immortality might lock you into an endless cycle of accumulating loss and relentless sorrow. Friends, family, everyone you've ever cared about would age, wither, and disappear, leaving you perpetually alone, burdened by infinite grief and memory. Your body wouldn't escape the ravages of time, either. You'd continually age, collecting countless scars and injuries from a lifetime of improbable survivals. This isn't simply philosophical speculation. The haunting loneliness of immortality is reflected vividly in fiction. Iconic characters such as Doctor Who and Wolverine, burdened with unnatural lifespans, highlight the deep sorrow of eternal life. Their endless existence is never portrayed purely as a gift. Instead, immortality weighs heavily upon them, stripping their lives of meaning, connection and purpose. Each of these fictional immortals poignantly captures a universal truth. Living forever might swiftly become unbearable. Quantum immortality, therefore, doesn't merely offer us the possibility of infinite survival. It forces us to grapple profoundly with the meaning of life itself. If endless existence truly condemns you to infinite sorrow, relentless isolation and ceaseless longing for escape, would you still embrace it as a miracle? Or could quantum immortality, far from being the wondrous gift we imagined, actually represent the harshest punishment conceivable? By now you're probably brimming with questions, skepticism and justified doubt about quantum immortality. Let's directly address some of the most pressing concerns about this controversial theory. Confronting these critical issues head-on to clarify both its scientific credibility and philosophical implications. One immediate challenge, often raised, is if quantum immortality truly exists, why aren't immortals openly living among us today? Why don't we observe anyone clearly defying death indefinitely? The answer lies in the profoundly private and subjective nature of quantum immortality. While your consciousness would experience endless survival, seamlessly shifting into universes where you remain alive, every external observer, your family, friends, or scientists studying your life, would witness an ordinary lifespan concluding in death. Quantum immortality, paradoxically, remains forever hidden, unobservable and unprovable from any perspective but your own. Another critical concern addresses the scientific legitimacy of quantum immortality itself. Doesn't it depend entirely on Everett's Many Worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, an interpretation still considered speculative by many leading physicists? Indeed, Everett's Many Worlds theory, though intellectually respected and supported by prominent figures like cosmologist Max Tegmark and physicist Sean Carroll, remains fundamentally unproven. Quantum mechanics still offers competing interpretations. For example, the widely accepted Copenhagen interpretation rejects the existence of parallel universes outright. 
Thus, quantum immortality hinges entirely upon accepting many worlds, a scientifically plausible yet still speculative view of reality. Lastly, we face a fundamental philosophical puzzle regarding personal identity and consciousness. If quantum immortality involves your consciousness shifting into alternate universes, is the consciousness surviving genuinely you, or merely a perfect copy carrying your memories and personality? Philosophers and physicists, including David Deutsch and Daniel Dennett, have debated this puzzle extensively without arriving at any definitive consensus. Quantum physics alone can't resolve questions about continuity or identity. Yet, practically speaking, the distinction might be irrelevant. Your subjective experience of surviving would always feel completely authentic and continuous, offering no indication of duplication or replacement. Confronting these challenging questions reveals that quantum immortality isn't just about achieving endless life. It's fundamentally about exploring the deeper mysteries of existence itself. Whether you're convinced or remain skeptical, quantum immortality pushes us to reconsider life's ultimate questions, the nature of life, death, consciousness, and personal identity. Ultimately, the debate over quantum immortality reminds us vividly that reality itself might be infinitely stranger, richer, and more mysterious than our everyday experiences could ever fully capture. We've now explored quantum immortality, one of science's most captivating, unsettling, and deeply provocative ideas. Whether you accept its astonishing promise of eternal survival or remain firmly skeptical, the theory undeniably reshapes our understanding of existence itself. Quantum immortality isn't merely about cheating death, it's a profound reflection on what it truly means to live meaningfully. Consider this carefully. If you genuinely believed your consciousness might continue indefinitely, how would that belief shape your choices? Would you live fearlessly, taking greater risks, confident you'd always perceive yourself surviving? Or would you live cautiously, burdened by the knowledge you'd endlessly face the consequences of every decision? Ironically, immortality could make existence infinitely more complex, daunting, yet possibly more meaningful. Yet even if quantum immortality forever remains speculative, simply contemplating it encourages us to cherish the remarkable improbability of our existence. Quantum mechanics alone reveals our universe as astonishingly mysterious, far stranger than we typically acknowledge. Our survival, even momentarily, could itself be considered miraculous, a brief flicker of consciousness against overwhelming cosmic odds. Quantum immortality also challenges our deepest assumptions, compelling us to address powerful questions we typically avoid. Why are we here at all? What genuinely makes life meaningful? Most importantly, how should we live knowing each moment matters far more than we usually realize? The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius expressed this brilliantly when he wrote, It is not death that a man should fear, but never beginning to live. Quantum immortality captures this wisdom perfectly, not by promising endless life, but by urging us to embrace our limited existence fully, authentically, and without regret. Finally, the next time you narrowly escape disaster or experience an uncanny moment of deja vu, pause to reconsider our opening scenario. Ask yourself honestly, was that extraordinary luck, or did reality itself shift imperceptibly, quietly guiding your consciousness toward continued existence? Quantum immortality may never offer certainty or scientific proof, but perhaps that's precisely why it's so powerful. It invites us into deeper reflection, reminding us life itself is an astonishing, improbable gift, something to marvel at, appreciate deeply, and never, ever, take for granted.